Coach, how do you how do you think you guys match up this year against teams like Detroit and Valparaiso and UIC? Well, I think the league is is better than it was last year. I think top to bottom, I think it's it's going to be better, and uh, you see that by looking at the all league teams. There's a lot of returning guys from that that league, but uh, we have to step up our program. We have to step up our game. We have to step up uh, every every phase of our our program. There's nothing to hide about that. We were we were. Bottom on offense, bottom on defense, and we, we need to pick up both of them. And uh, the first thing was improve the locker room. And uh, we did that, and, uh, and now we're going to get after it um, on, on every front. Uh, the, 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 like I said, watching a guy like Ben, uh, he's stronger than last year. Uh, we asked him to do so much last year that I think he's going to uh, really have the weight off his shoulders and even expand his game because he's not going to feel the pressure of doing absolutely everything. He's got some, some help, but no question, we're coming from behind trying to chase these other teams that are, that are more established and have done a great job. Colley is, uh, is one of the, the guys that I'll take from Iowa and he's, he's going to come in and expect to play their way. Who are some of the other guys that you expect to really make some contributions right off the bat? Well, we have seven freshmen. We have uh, Jeff Kiki White from Pure Emanuel. Um, we have uh, two Indiana boys, Nick Osborne and Matt O'Leary, two 6'8 kids. Um, we have uh, Tanner Williams is a post player from Illinois. Milton Doyle is a guard, uh, transfer from Kansas. Uh, that we have, and we signed two t Texas kids. We have a shooting kid who's, a, who's not just a shooter; he's a lot of different things. For us, Devin Turk, and then a six ten Jeremy King from Texas. That's that's seven newcomers. We have Cody Williams is our one junior college transfer, and then um, and then Collie who set out last year. And then I really like my two sophomores. We have two sophomores, which are both of the epitome of culture guys, Joe Christman and Christian Thomas. And uh, those guys, so we really have four guys back that played minutes last year, and Christian and Joe are the two underclassmen. Clark, can you talk a little bit about how you envision Colleen maybe from what he's going to do for you this year? What do you see him fitting in right away? Or? Yeah, you know, we, in, in Ambassador, you have, you have guys that can create shots for other people. You know, we, sometimes we call them shot clock guys. At the end of a shot clock, he breaks something down, penetrates, gets a guy a shot, creates a shot for himself. We didn't have any shot clock guys last year. Cully's, Cully's a good shot clock guy. He, uh, he had 40 assists, I think, something like that, in four games in Italy. He can get guys shots. Um, sometimes I, I'm trying to get him to shoot more because he, he loves the pass. And you like that out of the point guard. He loves the really good assists. Um, He's, he's one of our better shooters, so I really want him to really start looking for a shot more. But just to have that 
quarterback, that leadership uh, at the point. He's been there before. Um, he set out two years, though, so i got to kind of taper expectations early. Because anytime you sit out two years, there's going to be – and that's why Italy was so important. He got four games where he was coached and, there was, you know, on the floor. And uh, But, you know, he, he can really – get guys shots, guys like playing with them. I think Ben's gonna really, uh, you know, see his game go and, and be a positive effect from Cully playing because of, you know, he didn't have to create everything and the offense doesn't have to create everything just for Ben to get a shot. I think we got some guys that can create some things. Ben, over the years, Loyola has quite the history with UIC. What is it like playing in that rivalry between the two schools? Well, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's fun because it's, uh, you know, it's just down the road and it's, it's city breaking rights. I've been fortunate to be on the, uh, the right end of it, I believe, uh, five times so far, and I just want to make that, you know, have that continue this year and get two more wins. Coach, the renovation for the Field Center, how, how has that be been recruiting? It's been huge. I mean, I think people see an on-campus facility that has been modernized. Um, it has a great floor. You, you, you sell to the student body. There's 4,800 students live on Loyola's campus. That arena holds 4,800. We're in Chicago. I mean, our weight room spectacular. Um, we have something to sell. We have, we have something to sell. Let's just face it, I, and we just went through a big recruiting class. And we paraded a number of kids, all ages, since we got the job. And kids like facilities. It's, it's, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's what kids like facilities. They like being on TV. They like having a great practice place, a great locker room. It is. It just, it's part of you know, a reality. And that gives us a chance because we now have competitive facilities. Ben, talk about the energy in there last year compared to years past. Oh, yeah, there's definitely just been an influx in um, so many more people added to the support staff. Um, that's, that's been a definite change. Um, obviously, like our new strength coach has been phenomenal. Um, Dave had worked with the Timberwolves for a while, and he, he's brought something to, to the program um, that wasn't there. And obviously, there was a, a renewed energy with, with the coaching staff, and um, I, just I'm excited, I guess, for this year. Coach, cover Joe in high school. Let's talk about the freshman and sophomore year transition teams and the very talk over the summer and really in the holiday day. Joe fought through. I mean, he, he, I mean, our trainer, Tom Hitcho, should have got a raise because Joe kept in the business. Um, he seemed like Joe fought through like eight injuries. And I think Joe's healthy now. I mean, he, he I think he feels better. He's lost some weight. He's got his body, you know, I think feeling good. And I think. Uh, but Joe's one of those culture guys. I mean, every day, you know, he's going to run through a wall for you. And uh, I think his shot has improved dramatically in the last couple of years. And uh, I just, uh, you, you love having a kid like Joe Chris in your program because he's all in. He's all in academically. He's all in off the floor. He's all in on the floor. Well, I have kind of an older question. Okay. Right there, and it kind of looks at Loyola and the league. Um, you're in Chicago. The two teams in the city in Chicago. If you were to capture the Chicago market with your two programs, and I know you're focused on Loyola, um, that could mean so much to the league. Do you do you look at that at all? Do you kind of look at the beyond the initial turning Loyola around, but the, but the bigger picture and what it could mean? I mean, I am because I'm one of those psychotic coaches who are constantly <laughs> dreaming and thinking in the future. You know, you know, I don't talk about you know. With the players uh, like that, we talk about you know the immediate things we want to do right now. But you know, uh, absolutely, we, we absolutely a dream about you know where we could go, what it could mean to Chicago. And I grew up, I grew up here. I remember when it was the Ray Meyer days. And this is one of the greatest sports town. Now my bias is really coming out, but I mean, it's one of the greatest sports towns in the country. And it's craving a college basketball team to step up. And I asked her, why not us? Why not us? And I know we're coming from far behind to make that a reality, but there's not a day that goes by that doesn't beat my belly that that could happen someday. So it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's something we do, you know, in my crazy coach's bubble, you know, I envision. But, uh, you know, with, with, with our current players, we're constantly talking about every day getting better and, and you know, taking one step at a time. Coach, with uh, Chicago being such a huge market for college basketball, does that make it difficult for recruiting with all the schools in the area? You know, I, when, I, when I took over the Loyola job, there was one Illinois player on our team. We're Loyola of Chicago, and there's one. So that was a priority for me. And we 
Um, if you look at various different rankings, the top 20 players in Illinois. So in our first year recruiting from a last place team, if you take the top 20 players, Milton Doyle's ranked fifth, Kiki White was somewhere between 11 and 15, and Tanner Williams was 20. So in our first year, we got three of the top 20 ranked players in the state of Illinois recruiting from last place. Um, so that you know, says a lot about a lot of things. It says a lot about what Loyola stands for, getting their, their facilities, uh, my coaching staff, our energy recruiting. Um, but you know, I think that's just the beginning. I think we, we, we want to keep these, you know, a lot of these top players home. With that said, we're appealing across the country from different states because of our academic center location. So we sell both, both of those positives about what we have going. Yeah. Has won one conference game last year. Is there a chip on your shoulders? Or is it improved because of the sort of show that you're improving? Yeah, I think it, it just looking at it from a whole, um, from a career standpoint. Obviously, that um, three you know years of uh, eighth place of work. So there's something obviously personally you want to do. A, you know, your senior year. You also just want to um, have that feeling of success in college and um, you know playing past the the first round of the conference tournament. And, and obviously, that's. The mindset is that we got to, you know, with such a young team, we got to take it, you know, kind of, I know, cliche, but one game at a time in the beginning and, and build off that and have a lot of small success in the beginning of the year. So hopefully by the end of the year, then we're playing well. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.